Hi there everyone, I hope uh, today finds you well and that during this week you might have had a chance to reflect upon that whole sense of the awesomeness of God, his sheer majesty and size, the glory of our Lord who has done amazing things, who holds the universe between his thumb and his little finger, that, that picture window metaphor that sparks our imagination and helps us to understand how truly awesome God is. He is God and I am not. We are not. Yet, of course, in the midst of our circumstance, we can get lost in that and think, who am I that God is mindful of me? How majestic he might be, but he's too big and too great. And maybe, just maybe, what Mike said about him diving into creation is not quite right. And maybe he does stand back because he is so awesome and so powerful and so mighty. Well, I want to bring to you today that other metaphor, that other picture with a, with a phrase that goes through the whole of Scripture from, from right early on in Genesis all the way through to Revelation comes this phrase, often in the, the, the mouth of God himself, where he says, I am with you. I'll say that again. I am with you. Listen to this. He says to Isaac in Genesis 26, verse 24, that night the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and increase the number of your descendants. And then later on, he speaks to Joshua. As Joshua takes over from the people of God who've wandered in the desert for 40 years, who've been disobedient to God, yet God has provided for them. And as Joshua begins to consider stepping into the promised land, this is what God says. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Even in disobedience, the people in exile hear from God. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Isaiah 43 verse 5, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. He speaks to individuals like Jeremiah. Do not be afraid of them, Jeremiah, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Says to army officers left in Judah at the time of the exile, do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you and I will save you and deliver you from his hands. Then the prophet Haggai says this, then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message to the Lord to the people, from the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. All the way through scripture, obviously I'm just focused on Old Testament passages there. All the way through scripture, God is saying, I am with you, I am with you, I am with you. And then of course, supremely in the words of Jesus, risen from the dead, just about to ascend back to the Father, was with his disciples, of course, they've gone through all manner of craziness in, even in the last few days. And yet in that resurrection appearance, Jesus says this. After the Great Commission, he says, for I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then God speaks, Jesus speaks to Paul in Corinth when he's under immense pressure, he's under great threat to encourage him to stay longer in that crazy city of Corinth. He says, for I am with you and no one is going to attack you and harm you because I have many people in this city. The list is long. It is exhaustive. God says, I am with you. We can live this with God life. God is with us and he asks us to be with him. So the God who spans the whole universe in this most majestic way says, I am mindful of you. I know who you are. I know what you're going through and I am with you. And notice the other phrase, do not be afraid. 
He speaks to multitudes of people and he speaks to the one in the same way through the different circumstances they're in. Just think of being an exile, forced away from your land. We see pictures of this daily all across the world. The Afghans, the Syrians, the Rohingya people. So many people are displaced around the world in exile. There are so many people who are not in their homeland. And God says, I am with you. There are so many people going through dire experiences under extreme pressure like Paul or maybe those army officers fearing this empire, this Babylonian emperor. And he says, do not be afraid. I am with you. And then hear this wondrous hope that we all live in. You and I today live in this hope. In the book of Revelation, right at the end of Scripture, we get this beautiful story, this beautiful picture, this metaphor of heaven descending to earth, heaven come down. And John read, wrote these, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, this is the voice of God. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. God is with us. He's not with us from a distance looking on, tapping his chin, wondering what to do, or staring at us aghast at what we have done. He is there with us. And supremely, he has been there with us and is with us through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And that supreme sacrifice upon the cross, where Jesus became so with us, he took all our disobedience, all our dysfunction, all our brokenness upon himself, all that sin, and dealt with it on the cross. And when he said, it is finished, it is finished. And when he says, I am with you always, he is with you always. Turn to him today in your need or lack of need. Turn to him today with your joyous praises. Turn to him today because he is with you. Not only that, by his spirit, he dwells within us. And that is truly powerful indeed. Lord, today, may we know that you are truly with us. Amen. Be blessed.